Welcome to the best hour of their day podcast with your hosts, Jason Fernandez and me, Jason Ackerman. With more than 20 years in the business, as both coaches and affiliate owners, our passion is to help create world-class affiliates and coaches by building better boxes. Welcome to the best hour of your day. Welcome back. Best hour of their day. We've got another great guest. We've also got Katie Fern, myself here, and we have Matt Clum. Matt Clum, you've had quite the journey in this CrossFit space, and we want to hear all about it for sure no tell us tell us now all about it. <laughs> that was a terrible just for the record you know, jay's, just hop right jay's, in? yeah jay's actually not really good at this so it was a terrible lead into that so before you talk about that matt tell us a little bit about yourself let's go in the Wayback machine um where were you born surfer. yeah what's your middle name um just tell us a little bit about yourself yeah so so, so my name is matt from charlotte north carolina born and raised um here in charlotte and m- most of my life uh struggled with, with weight up and down. Um, but born, born and raised in Charlotte, I currently work in TV and film, uh, create content for, for websites and, um, uh, commercials, things like that. And yeah, I've been tried CrossFit, had some poor experiences, some good, some poor, I failed for whatever reason. And then, um, recently tried again and I'm having really good success and found a box that I, I really enjoy. Nice. What, so, what I, this, I always have this question before we get into the details. What, when somebody says I work in TV and film, that's, this is a very, very broad thing. It like, is very broad. <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, so for about 10 years, I, I, I started, I, I freelance. So I worked on TV shows, movies, commercials, all kinds of media. Um, and the last three years, I've been with the manufacturing company focusing on tools so a lot of the content for craftsmen, cobalt, hand tools that you see, uh, stuff that's coming out of, of our office. Jay, does, Jay doesn't know anything about hand tools. Um, <laughs> it's not handy. Um, I work now, with a tool. Does that count? Yeah. I, yeah, that counts for He's something. He's referring to Marcus. Um, the, uh, <laughs> the, he's not here. Um, the, um, but what do you do? I'm going to keep asking the question until we get an answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. So, <laughs> what would you say you do here in a tech, Matt? Current, currently, um, I'm a project manager, so I oversee video and photo projects for Got our it. company, uh, specifically direct and produce those videos. Got it. So, if you go to a big box store and you click on a tool and you see the photos and videos, uh, I direct and produce those types Got of it. pieces. Got it. I'm glad you didn't just end with project management because then I was just going to keep pressing you. It's yes. just like TV and film, project manager. I'm, yeah, it's a very, no, very no, that's broad cool. category. <laughs> no, that's cool. That's cool. Um, so you had you had alluded to like you've you've dealt with some weight issues growing up. Can you can you talk about that a little bit more? Yeah, I, I think. Uh, I mean, e- e- even as a kid, like I would wear the um, like husky pants. Like have to have to get like the the big kid pants in. Um, my way was always up and down, but then I would get into sports. So I played baseball growing up. And then in high school, I played middle school and high school, played basketball. So my weight would come down and then I would shoot back up. Um, I've spent a lot of time uh, overseas doing community development. And there's been times where I'll travel overseas and I'll be gone for a few months and my weight will drop drastically. And then when I'm back home, kind of the same thing, just would try a program, try going to a gym, try CrossFit. And it w- it's just been a roller coaster and I'm, I'm 34 now. And that's been most of my life. Cool. What's the, what's the heaviest you've ever been? 352. Okay. And then what are you now? Uh, I think around 300. I, ha- I haven't. Oh, nice. Yeah. So very cool. R- around 300 right now. Very cool. Um, so obviously you grew up playing sports. What, what were some of the things fitness wise that you've tried before you ever found, or when did you find CrossFit? Let me have a more direct question. Found CrossFit in 2019, I believe. Okay. So being in, in TV and film, like anytime I, my wife and I watch, uh, she, she works in film as well. So anytime we watch anything on Netflix or on TV, um, we always just appreciate uh, films and watching the CrossFit documentaries uh, I loved how well they were shot. They were just put together really well. So it, I just kept looking up content and then it was amazing to see that these men and women can, um, compete at that level. 
So kind of a combo of just like how, how successful these athletes were. And then how great the content was, is what got me into it. Did you so, see Jay or I in any of those documentaries? Most you importantly, did. you did. The answer is yes. You just might not have realized I'm, it. I'm sure I did. So there's an opening scene. I'll picture it for picture this. Picture this. Boom. Crossfit movie. Big words. Big words come out you. Then first shot. I'm judging. Uh, Me. No, I was judging. Who did I have? Tia or Kara? I can't even remember. Kara. I had Kara Saunders. And she, they were lunging down the finish line. Is this ringing a bell, Matt? Well, yeah, it's, it's starting to sound familiar. <laughs> yeah, that was me. Um, so is, I mean, is that part of why you wanted to be on the show? Were, were you trying to pull me away from this best hour and pull me into the Yeah, I mean, I was, I was hope, yeah, just connect Netflix documentary. With, with you. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you a couple off-topic questions. Best Netflix show. What's the go-to show we have to watch on Netflix? <sighs> best Netflix show? Um, uh, my wife and I are really into the F1 show right now. Uh, I heard a lot oh, of people yeah. talk about that, yeah. good. Yeah, uh, so that's uh, um, I forget the name of it, but the F one show that's on right now. Yep. Have you been? Have you um, participated in any of the shows on Netflix? Like anything? Um, not that's currently on Netflix now. In the past, I worked on a documentary for a. I, I worked on this documentary that. You guys probably have not seen it. What's all. it called? Maybe we don't. Come on. What? Maybe I heard of it. it might it's, be at the top of my queue. <laughs> it's yeah. called Four Blood Moons. Yeah. What's it for? For what? <laughs> for <laughs> right. Yeah. It's 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 uh yeah just the doc- documentary a faith based documentary. Yeah. Um, Katie's seen it. Um, yeah. <laughs> do you know? And then one last question. Katie's a big fan. Are you friendly with The Rock? I am not friend. Actually, a friend of mine just uh. He's in Hawaii. Katie. He lives in Hawaii. Katie. And got to meet The Rock and hang out with him for a bit. Oh, oh cool. Will you like... text that person and have The Rock yeah. shoot Katie's yeah. number? Yeah, yeah. For, for, big for, fan. for sure. Just, we're we're going we're gonna to shoot our shot and call on a favor here. Yeah. Um, Katie's goal in life is to interview The Rock. So oh. if we can make that happen. So so you find CrossFit in 2019 and, and that wasn't maybe the best experience? Yeah, well, so in... I actually joined the the box in 2020, but COVID had just started. They had just shut down. Not COVID. (laughs) Right. COVID had just started Mm. and they were meeting outside. Uh, They weren't allowed to meet inside because of mandates. And it was, it was a good experience. Uh, Yeah, it it was good. I, I didn't know what to expect and it was meeting outside. So my experiences later, I, I realized that it was very different than what a typical CrossFit class would look like. Can we? Okay. So I have a lot of questions now. So if you remember, feel free to answer these or just be like, I don't remember. How did you, you're like, I think I'm going to try CrossFit. Like, I want you to start there. So you do a search of some sort. What does that look like? Yeah. So, so there was a box that I was very familiar with just probably 10 minutes away from where I was living. I'd driven by it a bunch, seen them working out. So, I, so I you're knew, familiar with it just via line of sight. Like it was correct. somewhere in your field of view and your trans. Yeah. It was in okay. a neighborhood that I was very familiar with. Got it. Would drive by it a lot. So I, I, I didn't really search for any other box or location. I Googled, uh, got their contact, reached out and the, the owner, super nice guy. And he connected with me through zoom and we uh, decided to go through fundamentals and okay. just see what I thought and do a few classes. Okay. And then, so, so I'm actually pretty happy with all of that thus far. So, and this is not to poop on any box. Like I, I just want to walk people through this experience, but, but from your lens, like we, we talk about it a lot from the, from the box owners lens, but I want, right. I want you to kind of, well, let's do a documentary here, Matt. Like, yeah. So, so I, for, let's for, I, for and, you got to paint I, the scene. You got to paint yeah, yeah. the scene for like Matt. How I found CrossFit is the name of this documentary. Matt. I don't <laughs> like that. Let's go with a better working title than that. And somehow I CrossFit. <laughs> somehow. <laughs> um, let's go with. Um, finding a new me. OK, you like look at that. You see what <laughs> right away. Right away, you guys. It'll, 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 in this, yeah, in this, in the search criteria, like the first thing that'll pop up is finding Nemo, and then it'll be like finding a new me. Yeah, but imagine all the kids that are looking for that fish movie, and now they're finding we'll a documentary about CrossFit. There we go. Yeah. 
So, yeah. Cool. yeah so, 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 so in 2017, I had created kind of my own workout plan. I just Googled a bunch of stuff and thought I figured something out. And I ended up losing 98 pounds wow. in six months. Damn. Um, so I, I dropped awesome. from 352 to, to 254 uh, really quickly. Um, but it was by myself and it, it was hard. I was eating the exact same thing every day. So and, pause there for a second. Someone that Googles this finds this. What do you eat every day based on your uh, Google research? Right. So based on this guy who's very out of shape, has no idea what he's doing and Googling, I landed on, um, and, and I can, I can send it to you guys, but it was, it was like every morning, uh, oatmeal, I think in the morning. And then two hours later, I would do half of a chicken breast and green beans. Two hours after that, I would do the other half in green beans. Two hours later, I would do half of a small steak and broccoli. Two hours after that, I would do the other half in broccoli. And then I was working out about two hours to two and a half hours a day. So from what I'm hearing is. A, that's kind of like an old school bodybuilding diet. Right. And then B, you went right to an unsustainable. Correct. Training program. Yeah. Right. Which and is even your I, nutrition program. Yeah. And, and I, I got to the point where I, I did it for five or six months and, and I lost all this weight. And then I was like, oh, I'm cured. Now I can stop doing this. And then I ballooned right back up. So I wanted, that's what interests me. So you lose a hundred pounds. You're training two, two and a half hours a day. You're eating this very strict bodybuilding routine. What is the, what is the first day off your routine look like? And what goes like, there must be a point as this is happening where you're like, I'm losing progress. Yeah. Of Cause I think so. that's always like, I always try to, it's hard for, I, you know, I'm speaking for Fern and Katie, you know, we've never been a hundred pounds overweight. And it's hard to wrap your head around that. Like, so I can speak for myself there. We traveled to Nashville last week. I come home and I look in the mirror. I'm like, I'm not happy. I need to dial things in. But I think everyone's runway for that kind of kick in the butt or fire being lit is different. So what does that look like? Hey, I'm, I'm changing this routine. And then at what point are you like this? I'm make, I'm losing all this progress. Right. So, so for me, I, I guess it wasn't a, a, flip of the switch, I'm going to stop. It turned into, um, I can do an hour of working out today or tonight I can go out to eat and I don't have to eat steak and broccoli. Um, so your, it was, it was for your workouts, slow. for your workouts, was this all steady state cardio and was it two hours in one block or were you doing like multiple sessions throughout the day? Multiple sessions. So okay. I would usually go to the gym twice and I would try to do at least an hour of cardio and then focus on, uh, three to five different, uh, weight movements. Okay. Okay. And yeah, I just slowly started slipping away at the time I had a game night every Tuesday night. So a bunch of friends would come over, everyone would bring food and I had been sustaining from that. And, uh, then I just started chips and soda, like whatever. And then slowly I was like, okay, trickle back in. Right. And and then I get to two sixty, and I'm like, okay, at two sixty five, I'm going to get back on it. And then I hit 265 and it's like, okay, at 275, <laughs> I'm going to get serious. And it just, at 300, I'm going to get serious. How quick is that back to 300? Um, less than a year. It, I mean, I got to three. Okay. I was thinking like weeks, but you're talking. So you, yeah, okay, I mean, it, was, it was slower. Because typically the faster someone and the more drastic of that diet and uh, exercise plan, the faster it also comes back. Right. So you, were, yeah, I, you I weren't being I, completely out of control then if it took a year to come back. Yeah. I mean, I, I still tried to, I had started playing racquetball with friends. Like I'd started doing, I lost hundred pounds. So I could, I could do more yeah. activities. And so those activities just slowed down uh, for, for me. And then before I knew it, I was three thirty again. Wow. So, okay. And go ahead. Fern. So I was going to say, so you, so you find CrossFit, we'll just call it CrossFit down the street from my house and you go there. How long are you there before? Wait, wait. Let's give the name of the box you went to. No, not the first one. Yeah. No, let's do it. Matt, come on. <laughs> See, I told you I was going to do this to you, Matt. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm only doing it because you said before we re- I record that I would do it. All right. You probably would have done it anyway. <laughs> but so you go to CrossFit down the street from my house and right. how long are you there? And what it, what's, what's your time like there? Like, do you, do you see any weight loss or are you enjoying it? 
do you hate it? How does how's yeah, that work? Yeah, so so I I love it because in my head it's like oh I can get in the shape and compete one day. Like I'm, I'm gonna like like I just love the games. I fell in love with the games. So in my head I'm like oh this is incredible. Like after my as soon as I finished my fundament fundamentals I was like oh man I'm an athlete now. Um, you so I was like in in, in my head, yes. and uh, so I loved it. I, I went for um probably two or three months before it started getting hard the first month first four to six weeks we were outside i didn't see a ton of progress i wasn't i would go work out but then i my eating habits hadn't changed at all and my lifestyle was still the same and i i wasn't pushing myself as hard as i could have the month that we moved back into the box back inside it was, it was just different. Like it was like all these videos I'd seen, like I'd see the rig and the ropes hanging down and it just felt uh, cool to me, I guess. Like that may sound weird, but it just felt better. So it, it really like lit a fire and I, I started focusing on my health and I got on the in-body machine and I was um, in the first month back inside I lost 28 pounds in one, that first month and gained six pounds of muscle. Um, or maybe, maybe it was like five pounds of muscle and a pound of uh, bone density or something. Nice. But it was 28 pounds in the first four weeks back inside. And then so, I, I, I mean, you're there for a month. I, I mean, I, it's not, I don't think it's weird. You're like, it might sound weird. It's cool. But like, so you've seen this thing on the documentary is you go join, but you don't actually get to go inside. So you're doing it, but you don't actually get to see it. Is right. that right? Yeah. So I don't think that's weird at all. I also think this brings up a good point, which is kind of a point of contention in the CrossFit games is that the CrossFit games, while it is not, while it is an expression of CrossFit is not independent of CrossFit, right? It's an expression of CrossFit, but I, I don't think we should glance over the fact that like it is in the seminar staff. Matt, have you taken your level one by chance? I have not. All right. Do you want to take your level one? I would love to someday. Yeah. All right. I think, we, I think we could help you out with that. So <clears throat> I think what shouldn't be uh, kind of glanced over here is that in, in, in the seminar staff setting, we talk about three things, educate, inspire, entertain. And the games is a big portion of that inspiration piece. Like people need something to be inspired by. And the games is a really good microphone for that. We just have to learn to, to mesh the two so that when somebody does see that, they've decided to make this change like you did. Well, then when they come in the box, we can continue that inspiration, but now we can layer in, you know, the education piece, you know, um, and the entertainment piece and make it fun while being inspired. So I, I don't, I don't want to just, uh, I want to make sure we don't just bl- brush over that. Cause I think that's an important piece of this story. And I know like people like to poo poo on the games, but it is a massive microphone that it is highly inspirational for many people. Yeah. I mean, for, for me, that was the thing that encourage me to to talk to that first box you mean it wasn't a facebook ad that said uh join the gym for a six-week <laughs> challenge and then, yeah <laughs> right i want to be really wasn't. clear about this fern because i think we're, we're not even we're brushing over too much matt at the time you were 354 pounds no yeah, that was the first time so the, when i joined the box i was around 330 okay so yeah. but you were still over 300 pounds great found a CrossFit documentary on the games at 300 plus pounds, never having done CrossFit years since any athletic endeavors, you saw this thing and it inspired you to join a local CrossFit affiliate. hundred percent. There it is. Katie, there's your clip. You can hop off this call, Katie. Your job is done for the day. That's I th- Fern. You, you mean you touched on it, but I think that cannot be understated. It's like all these people that want to poo poo on it. Smart people understand there's a difference. I'm inspired by this thing. Let me go do this thing over here. And it's for some reason, no different than you mentioned racquetball. There are professional racquetball players. You picked up racquetball to be fit, to get to have a little fun and get enjoyment out of it. I go to jujitsu. Fern, you know, plays basketball, whatever he does. Right. The point point is like, there's this misconception that just because something also has a sport or competitive nature involved that that it's it's no longer ideal for the average joe by the way 
the four of us are average Joes. Most of our listeners are average Joe. It's like, no, the, the sport of CrossFit shows people what this thing is. And as long as you're moderately, I mean, how intelligent do you have to be for, to be like, okay, that's pros, but I want to do this thing myself. I'm not very smart. I, mean, I figured pretty, it out. I'm pretty dumb and I figured it out. So, well, you um, did try to compete for, for the record for a little while. No, I did compete for the record for a little oh, yeah. while. I didn't try. I, you tried. Hey, I did. Hey, yeah. Matt, are you familiar with a guy named Ben Smith? <laughs> uh, ben, he was, uh, he competed. He At one ordered, point, he's a fittest. Competitor, right? He, well, he competed. He, he was, he won the games. Were not you older, say? but like, like 2012, 13, like around that time. Yeah. He's been like 10 times, I think. He's yeah. been there for many times, and he was the guy that won between when Froning won and Frazier won. Okay, yeah. Um, but also should be stated, Fern beat him in a workout. I don't know if that's a big deal. And you're like, you, uh, we don't awesome. talk about that very often. We, he, we should, I, you know what? We should talk about it more to be very. Yeah, I mean, to, right. yeah, I mean, you definitely did not point it out every time we walked past his picture at CrossFit Mayhem last week. I mean, I just thought it should. I thought people should know. Thought people Katie, should know. how many that times? Was- did he mention shout, it last week? At shout out, shout out, Ben Smith, great dude. Are you guys friendly now? Now that your competitiveness is yeah, over, he's, are you guys. He's, I, 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 I get the sense that he's still a little angry about he's it. Still yeah, he's about that, still salty huh? about that win, huh? Yeah. Um, anyway, Matt, we don't we don't typically brag on this show, but that's a big deal. No, I mean that would be in my Instagram description if that was me. So, I'm oh yeah, it, it is. Right like, now, Fern, actually, you should. Yeah, yeah, it should it right say now. affiliate. It's just a best hour owner affiliate. You. Uh, beat Ben Smith in a workout. Uh, exactly. Two kids. Happy dad. Two kids. <laughs> right above the kids thing is your win against Ben Smith. Actually, I'll give you a peek behind the curtain, Matt. So one of the drills that we do with affiliate you is we have our clients write their eulogy. We did that ourselves. We go through the same drills for us. That was in Fern's eulogy. Hey, guys. <laughs> also. Not true. Yeah, not true. But. Um, so Anyway. Let, let, let's keep going. What I'm interested in is this aspect of it, Matt. You go to this first box. What was it called again? CrossFit down the street from you. CrossFit yeah. down the street. Bo- bo- box one. I box got, one. Box one. <laughs> Enjoyed the out, you know, the outdoor workouts, et cetera. Kind of didn't think you were making progress. Eventually made some progress, but what was the, um, where did it go wrong? Or did it go wrong? So yeah, good. Yeah. 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 So like, I guess, so from a box owner view, they have something they call, you know, like length of engagement or lifetime engagement with somebody. How long were you there before you departed? Uh, probably eight months, nine months. Okay. Okay. And then how was that? How was that? And would do, were you able to identify like, even after the fact, like what was kind of the catalyst for you deciding to take a break from that? I mean, it was, uh, yes, it's, it's, so it's, it's kind of tricky because I, I, w- I wouldn't say that I had th- that experience. Like I, I enjoyed that box. I enjoyed the people, but there were these little variables that I would say are wrong. It just wasn't like my style. So, so one thing would be a lot of the warmups were, were games. And if you didn't win the partnered game, you had to do like five burpees. Well, I mean, every warm up, I'm doing 20 burpees. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm losing right. every single time. And so like little things like that just started to add up. And the, the coaches were, were very, like, I, I've never, of all three boxes that I've experienced, one thing that is very unique that, that I've noticed is, is how genuine uh, the, the owners and, and coaches seem to be. Like, I, I haven't met a rude coach. Um, I've always had an enjoyable, personable experience. But just the, the like the games wasn't really my style, and then my um, my fiance at the time had started going, and she just she's very athletic. She she surfs and bikes in, and, and a six mile jog is is easy for her. To where I'm struggling to to get 200 meters, and it just wasn't her thing. And I, I I'm the type of person who I play off of other people, and I, I want to be careful not to blame her at all. Like I like I'm, it's, I'm responsible for my health. So, but just these little variables just kept stacking up and it's like, Oh man, like, like I, I want to make her happy. She's not enjoying this. I don't enjoy these burpees every single class. Um, and then there were little things like, I, I remember one time 
it was an 800 meter run at the end of the workout. And I, like, I was struggling. Like I just couldn't finish this and they bring the whole class outside and they're like clapping and cheering. And that part, I hate it. Like I just, and, and I don't think it's wrong. Like I think a lot of people would probably fuel off of that. But for me, like I'm 32 wanting to like hide in a bush and just ball my eyes out. Right. Like I just hated it. Um, so these little variables just stacked up and I, well, I, I started think it's going important. less and less. Well, I think so. I, this is, this is the nuance of this conversation. So correct me if I'm, or, or chime in here, Jay, at any point, but like everything you stated, I don't see anything really wrong with anything that, that was going on there. Like games are great, you know, like they're, you know, some sort of winning, you know, and losing isn't super weird, honestly. And then cheering people on at the end. Right. right. However, while everything works, not everything works for everybody. And, and these are the little nuances that as box owners and coaches, we have to pay attention to. And this is why these are some of the things that I think in order to be a great coach, forget what kind of fitness or sport you teach, having high EQ and being aware of people's body language, the way they speak, things of that nature will help you avoid these things. And if, if I'm a coach and I pick up after we do one or two of these games, during the warm up, that you're not digging it, that like I can see your your body language is negative, that you like maybe you have like a grimace on your face and you're annoyed. I'm gonna make a note of that. Be like, hey, listen, we're not gonna do these games every time because clearly, you know, he's he's gonna lose this, and and I don't want to set him up for failure when he's trying to come in here and and get a win. And maybe I adjust my warm up moving forward. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Right, you can still get a good warm up without playing a game, and then go back to it in another class where it might be a little bit more. Um, um, equally weighted with regard to participation. And then, okay, maybe you make a mistake on the clapping and stuff like that. Just take note of it and just maybe don't, maybe I don't want to say discourage people from doing that, but like just be aware of the interactions that are happening in the gym. And maybe you lean on some people to do it a little bit more sometimes. And maybe you kind of like let them slide and don't do it um, other times. So I'll give you a perfect example, Matt. I don't know what they did at, at what they do at, at any of your, the boxes that you've been to, but something that we're, we like to take pride in at CrossFit Rife and on seminar staff is when the workout's over, um, nobody cleans up their equipment, right? So everybody does it at the end. I don't know if that have, do they do it kind yeah, of, that's like how that. it is at the box I'm at now. Perfect. I think that's beautiful. So yesterday I was in a jam. I was in the, I was in one of the classes and we were running towards the end of the class. We had a guest coach in there, um, who came in to, to get some evaluation and we were running late and I finished the workout and we had about six or seven minutes left before the class is over. And I had a thought and I made the wrong decision for full disclosure. And I made, and I made the uh, comment to the coach afterwards um, to one of my coaches was watching the class. And I was like, I, I, I don't want to leave my stuff out, but I have to get on this call. And I need to be, I need to be like functional for this call in six minutes. So I started cleaning up my equipment and I knew when I was doing it, I was like, man, I was like, I, I should leave it, but I don't want to leave it. But if I do this, somebody else is going to follow suit. And I did it. And like four other people started cleaning up their equipment. And as soon as I did it, I went to the coach and I said, Hey, listen, from now on, if I ever try to do that, just don't let me do it. I knew that was going to happen and it happened anyway. So I think the, what I'm trying to get out here is like these nuances that, that seem kind of mundane and benign are not actually mundane or benign at all. If you stack enough of them on top of each other, they, be, they can become a negative experience for somebody, which we're trying to avoid. Um, so uh, yeah, because, and what strikes me in that story that you're telling is they're like nothing none of that would really pop off the page. If you were looking, if you're looking at somebody's experience coming into a CrossFit affiliate. Yeah. I, I, for, for, from, for me, from a marketing perspective, I, uh, my three box experiences, I, I, I can't say that they're, they're bad necessarily, but they're, they're very different. And I, I think a lot of times people tried to market to a broad group of people and that's where you feel like the companies that are successful in marketing, they know like, Hey, I'm trying to reach this age bracket doing this thing. And that first box, I would say they're great at community, uh, the, the community, like we, the, the games and stuff like that, but it, it just wasn't the vibe that that really fit for me. And that's okay. And it's not, and not all gyms are for everybody. Uh, and I think this is more just a, a kind of like a, uh, a discussion or an exercise to walk through for, for, you know, people who are 
potentially looking to go to CrossFit affiliate or affiliate owners in general, you know, just they're thought provoking, you know? Um, so on that note, let's switch gears and let's go to your current box. Cause that's why you reached out to us. Well, can I just have one thing for um, one? I'm not a huge fan of the games at CrossFit affiliates. If I'm being completely honest, I not think after every day. Yeah. I was going to say like, I think every so often and done right. But like your classic pizza game thing, it's like, at some point it's like, are we warming up or are we just, you know, being silly, feeling, being silly. Right. So I definitely think there's something to, to be said about that, especially when there's punishment involved. Like, and I will say this, like it shouldn't have taken much of an emotional intelligence to realize, okay, this guy that, you know, is on a weight loss journey, probably we shouldn't be punishing him. Right. It, 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 that shouldn't have taken that much wherewithal. You know, and then again, you know, and then what Fern said, I think there's a difference between like, hey, we're finishing this workout on the floor and everyone's cheering you on versus like a running workout where it's like you're 800 meters array away and now people are cheering you on for six minutes. Like, and again, it's like coaches need to have better, uh, you know, just emotional intelligence there and, and be able to read the room better, be able to, and, and part of this is just, talking to them, you know, if I would have picked up on that two weeks ago, I would have realized and maybe said, Hey, on that workout, like, Hey guys, let Matt finish, but you know, wait till he's over here to cheer him on, et cetera. Um, so I, I don't like, like Fern kind of alluded to nothing inherently wrong with what was going on, but it should have and could have been better and provided you with a better experience. Cause you know, there are people that will have that experience and to be like, I'm done with CrossFit. Every CrossFit's the same. Like our argument to people is, I think where we're going to go with Matt, it's like, no, smart people realize it's an affiliate model and I'm going to go check out another one. But let me throw this at you, Matt. Let's put a little bit back on you. Why didn't you talk to the owners about this? Oh, the, yeah. So I, I think as someone who, so I can speak to myself, but I, I think this, he, I think this uh, applies to a lot of overweight pe people. I, I think there's a level of a lack of boundaries uh, a lack of control, like a lack of self-control, a lack of, of boundaries just in their life. And I, I think a lot of times you look at someone, someone who is struggling with their weight or is, say is a hundred pounds overweight. I, I, I imagine that there's other areas in their life that they're overdoing or over consuming uh, that, that is attached to that. Like, I, I think it's more an internal issue. So for me, like I, I went into it and I've had to work a lot, even on the last two to three years to create boundaries and uh, speak up to my speak up and say, Hey, like, I don't understand this. Can you explain it to me? Because when I first started, like I, I'm, it's very, it's highly intimidating for me over a hundred pounds coming in and seeing people like you guys are working out. And it's like, man, I like, this is intimidating. I, I don't want to be the one complaining. I don't want to be the one like not finishing something. I don't want to be the one with all the questions. So there, I think there's a, a lot of insecurity that I had that first time around that if, if I didn't have that, the coaches probably would have been able to work with me a lot better. Well, I mean, it's always a two way street when it comes to communication, I think. And I think, uh, you know, knowing that, right. So like, regardless if you know, I would assume that you talked to the gym owner when you came in before joining and, and had some discussion about weight loss. Is that, yeah, correct. Accurate. Yeah. So I think kind of knowing that and commu maybe communicate, communicating that to your team, um, while yes, we do want to create an environment where our, our clients are comfortable coming to us, that takes a lot of work on our end. Like we're going to have to actively seek that out. Right. So, and again, this is, I've done, I've made all these mistakes, by the way, Matt, Jay's made them twice. Um, the, but, Some three the, times. yeah, but, and, and the point at the point that I, that I, the kind of take home from all of this is I, is we should all be a little bit more introspective about this and ask ourselves questions like, are people having a good time? Is this a good idea? Okay. We could do it once, but is every day too much? You know, was that pleasant for everybody? And I don't mean the workout because the workouts are never pleasant for anybody, but this, this thing that we did, was that kind of open for everybody? And if we have people that we know will likely have some sort of um, intimidation or lack of confidence we should have the wherewithal or put it on our radar to maybe reach out to them a little bit more frequently and check in on them. Just be like, Hey, how's it going? Are like, are you having, are there any 
struggles that you're having right now? Like, what can I help you with as you work through this until you get to the point where you're more comfortable in the space, more comfortable with yourself on this journey to make it through, um, just to, just to do our part essentially. And I'll say this at 43 going on 44 years old, my empathy has improved, right? So 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when I had my boxes, Matt would have walked in just like Murph came in at 500 pounds. And I'm like, cool, dude, let's do CrossFit. Right. Without thinking about like all the other things going on. And and so I had someone named uh, Jason Murphy came in, you know, 400, 500 pounds, amazing transformation. Um, you know, but it certainly I didn't know enough about that. A question we asked Kevin Ogar, and I would throw this to you, Matt, what is something or multiple things as affiliate owners, as coaches, we don't understand that's going through someone's head who's there to lose a substantial amount of weight. I would say that there's like, like I came in with this, um, Oh, I can lose a lot of weight really quick. I've, I've did it before. Like I lost 98 pounds quick. And I, like, I understand that that's not healthy or sustainable. Um, but being told like, um, like, Hey, you may, you may not see any results. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Just things that are sensitive. So like in my head, it's like, Oh, I can lose five weeks a pound or, or five pounds a week. Pounds a week. Um, and then being told you may not lose, but five pounds this month. And it's like, man, like, I feel like I'm already failing before I even get to the class because this is in my head. So education um, is part of it. Like you just, yeah, I think, don't I know. think so. And then, or is that, or is, is that education matter? Would you, or would you, expectation. I was going to say expectation, maybe I think clearing, clearing up ex, like communicating expectations. And then what I've really enjoyed about box three is that the, the owner, she just told me, she goes, Hey, this first month, I don't want you to focus on intensity. I want you to focus on form and technique and don't worry about competing with anyone else or we would like, we just want you to focus on technique. And that just made me feel so good because it felt like I could come in and it felt like she was with me for the long term from the very beginning, instead of just throwing me into a class after fundamentals. For the record, Matt, if, even if, if I was not having a discussion with somebody who was overweight, I would tell them the same thing. And, and are you willing to say the name of this box? It's uh, CrossFit Huntersville. Cool. Oh, uh, you, you know them for I do know them. So funny story. How do you know them? They they reached gonna, out about the Ben Smith thing. Um, yeah. Well, they're part of my fan club. No, <laughs> um, that my cousin's husband used to own that gym. Yeah, they don't anymore. But yeah, Eddie. cousin's husband. I feel like that's what you would say if my you didn't actually know them. My sister's roommate's former dog walker. You don't um, have a cousin. Um, no. So what no, I'm my interested co- my though- cousin, my cousin. So uh, you know, it was a weird story. So small, small world. This is how small the world is. So. Um, <laughs> Do you remember Co- Cody and Noel? I from, do know Cody and Noel, yes. From uh, Mount Island. So I met Cody and Noel. So they own that gym because they were friends with Lindsay and Eddie. And I met and I they sat me at the table with Cody at their wedding. That's how I met Cody the first oh, time. Wow. Oh, and okay. Then, cool. So Huntersville, um, Eddie uh, Hill used to own that and he sold it to his partner who, who actually just sold it. And the new owner, I just recently did her level two. In Morrisville, what does remind me of her name, Matt? Uh, the the owner now. Yeah, it's Erica. For, yeah, get her last yep. name. Yep, 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 yep. Maybe well, like shout three, out to Erica. Maybe, yeah, shout You're out to Erica. Doing a great job. <laughs> so, yep. what I'm more interested though, Fern, is this, and for you, Matt, you've had a. I wouldn't say it's a bad experience. It was just not the right experience for you. Yeah, I would right? say the, the the first box was more me. Like I. I still, the, the husband and wife that own it, like they're, they're good friends. They're uh, one thing I, I do want to brag on them. One thing that like stood out from, from that experience, there, there was one time that I was doing the running is the worst part yeah, for, for me. I like I like hate the running. Same. And uh, one time I was running and, and the, the owner came out and he ran with me and I pointed it out. I, I feel like I, tr- I tried to look for, social cues and just like how, how people are operating. Like, it's, it's really interesting to me. And I, I noticed that he, right as we finished, he like backed off and let me go first. And after I was like, dude, like, I like, 
I really appreciate that. Like it just, it just made me, something in me. It just made me feel good. Like I can't like, explain it, but that that's always stood out to me about him specifically. Like he that's was cool. so aware that's cool. um, of, of that. That meant a lot to me. I did that to Katie last week when we were working with Henshaw. I was like, I was like you going to go the opposite and say, and Matt and say that Jay would not have let you win because Jay does. Oh, I would have crushed you, Matt. <laughs> um, no, but so, but, but what I was going at is the, the misconception that one affiliate ruins other affiliates. So my question to you is with, with having experiences that, you know, weren't up to what you needed. Like, again, they weren't good nor bad, just not what you needed. What was it about you? What did you know about CrossFit that was like, Hey, this thing is still for me. I just haven't found the right fit yet. Yeah. So, so I think, I think there, I think there's this big divide with people who don't do CrossFit and, and people who do, and it's, you're going to get injured. It's not for everyone. I, I recently told someone that I joined CrossFit Huntersville and they were like, Oh man, are you, you sure you're not going to get injured? Like I, I would love to, but I'm, I'm 44. Like that's not for me. And I, you can't do it once you're past a certain age. And I, I think there's this, it, people either know everything about it, which is why I think that it gets this like cult vibe where people say, oh, it's cold or it's this or that, or people know nothing about it. And they just think you're going to get hurt. And for me, like I did so much research uh, online, watching YouTube videos, all the documentaries that I was like, oh, this is for me. Like everything can be scaled down is what the claim is. So let me go see if that's true. And, and it, it has been. So. That's cool. So, so what are some of the things let's give Erica a shout out here too. So you, you end up going to Huntersville. What's that look like when you start and, and what is it that, you know, you're at, you're at your third box, right? So enough, enough affiliates to kind of get a feel for the vibe and like, Hey, I feel like this, this is the one. So enlighten us on that so that we can give, you know, a full kind of spectrum view of through your lens of, what that experience has been like. Yeah. So, so the way that I've, I found Huntersville, I, we actually found a larger gym that was a, an exit away. And my wife was interested because it, there was no barbells. They had a class that offered no barbells and we tried that class and she tried that class. I tried the CrossFit class in that box. It, it was just so overwhelming. There's three timers going multiple classes happening at the same time. I can't hear what I'm supposed to be warming up. Like I just sensory overload. And for the people, I know a lot of people that still go there and they love it. That works for them. But for me, like we, we immediately left there. I'll go to work. As soon as work's over, we go to CrossFit Huntersville and Erica was just like, Hey, what, like, what's your goal? And she just talked to us and we explained her experiences and something that really stood out was that I've heard you guys talk about this. I guess everyone can't do this, but Erica allows open gym. Um, so for someone like Allie, my wife, there could be more programming. Allie's not looking to build a lot of muscle. She's looking for more endurance stuff. So there was an option for her. That's not a CrossFit class and, and little things like that really stood out. And then just how the fundamentals were different. And I don't know if for me, the fundamentals were different because I'm in a different season of life, but, it, but it seemed, I just understood things better. The communication was more clear for me. Do you think that you understood them better because the communication was more clear or do you think you just had enough, um, kind of experience to, to wrap your brain around the whole thing a little bit more because it, it's a lot, right? Like yeah, let's, yeah. Not, let's not pretend that it's not if you're your first time, it's a lot, but so do you, it is, I, I think just being in the box, I, I, I hate that my fundamentals was at a park with box one. Right. And it was just with a PVC pipe. Like I, right. we just couldn't go inside. So I, I think that's a huge variable, probably the, the largest variable, but the, the communication. And I, I think just, being inside. I don't know. It was just different. Like mm -hmm. Erica took her time and yeah, it was, I, I can't explain it except to say communication. Well, I mean, it, it very well could have just been pure chance due to the one is COVID we're outside. The other one is normal operation, you know? Yeah. So it, it's, you know, one of these is it just be, you know, for lack of better terms, like just dumb luck, 
that it that that happened that time. Um, what are some other things you like about Huntersville that are like? Do you how many times a week do you go? So right now I'm going four. I take one day okay. off a week. Perfect. That's great. Uh, That's great. And then yeah. what do you what do you like about the way that they run classes? It seems box box one was very um, flowy. Like I I didn't I didn't see a difference in like the weightlifting or gymnastics section versus the workout section. Like it just kind of flowed. Everything seemed very fast, even though it was still an hour of time. Mm-hmm. To where CrossFit Huntersville, there's a very clear like, hey, here's what we're doing today. And then that cuts off. Here's our warm up that cuts off. Here's our weightlifting gymnastics would, um, portion. And then here's our, our wad for the day. There's just four very clear distinctions of what's going on. And every class it's, everything's explained for those doing RX versus all the way scaled down and then mini scaled options. Kind of a, a sidebar here, but this has come up several times and I just, just what is, how do you feel about the term scaled? I, I don't have a problem with it. Okay, cool. Just curious. Some people like to use other words and I'm like, why are we reinventing? Yeah, I mean, how I, do you feel about the term? I'm fine with it. How do you feel about the term level four? <laughs> One day. Yeah. One day. Goals. I like that. I like that. <laughs> One, day, One day, Jay, you will be a real level four. <laughs> so, uh, so you've been showing up consistently. Have you done a workout prescribed yet? I have not. No. How long have you been going? I finished my fourth week today. Us awesome. today? What'd you do this morning? We did pull-ups, um, 40, 45 pull-ups, 75 burpees. 10 air or 50 air squats and then 75 or uh, 10 box, 50 box jumps and then 75 air squats. Nice. I mean, it was broken down. Um, cool. And it fought five rounds. Okay. And you, and you're still feeling positive. So about, about going in excited to go in, what's, what's the current weight loss been like for you since over those last four weeks? Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying not to, uh, to weigh, I've been like glued to the scale. So this time I just want to focus on not worrying about a number and just cool. progressing in the class, which is something I, I haven't tried in the past. I think that's a good headspace. I'm mean, obviously, Agreed. obviously you'll be able to know, but I think that's a, a, a little bit of a better headspace to be in. Um, you know, yeah, I think because- too many people get attached to the scale. It's one metric. You know, there's so many other things, you know, we talk about it at the, at the level one, how do you look, how do you feel, how are you performing? And if you chase performance, most of these other metrics are going to follow. But if you're only focused on the scale, just like you, you mean, you had great success with the scale technically, right? When you were on your right. bodybuilding diet training for three hours a day, and then what ultimately happened. So what, what's, your, what's your goal? To do RX right now is, is my that, goal. Is that like kind of like the big picture for you? Is it, So there's no number on the scale or there's no other data points that you're looking at with the physician or, or anything? Uh, n- not, not right now. Yeah. I mean, for, for me, my, my wife is, uh, very athletic. I, and I, uh, love her and I, I want to be able to do things, uh, with, with her. So, and just in four weeks I've, I've, um, I'm not complaining when we go on a two to three mile walk. Um, nice. I'm like, yeah, we, we ride bikes just about every night or do something. And just in the three to four weeks, like I've, seen lots of progress even in that area. So would you say gaining confidence inside the gym is helping you gain confidence outside of the oh, gym? A hundred percent. This, this morning, uh, I, I know this is probably low, but I, uh, I squat cleaned one fifteen. Nice. and I like, nice. I can squat tweet, clean one sixteen, but that's pretty the good. World about it. <laughs> <laughs> like I like, I was so excited that I had to like worked up. Nice. So you hit that. That's awesome. you, you hit, yeah. And then, and yeah. then, who would you tell about that? Your wife, you text your wife immediately. Oh, no, after? Well, no, I'm saying that like, I, I, I want to tell everyone, but I like, I, I don't post that much on social and stuff. We've told and... about seven people on this podcast now. <laughs> so that's great. <laughs> no, but it, it's, it's cool. And, and, and the class, I, I go to the 6 30 AM class and, and it's, it's great. Everyone, all, all the members are very encouraging. And I it was actually a member this morning who encouraged me to, to throw some more weight on and, and try one more time. And I, I wouldn't have tried it if it wasn't for him. 
So for What's me, that the person? Community aspect, who's that? His name's Ryan. Yeah, a nice job, Ryan. Shout uh, out he's, Ryan. Yeah, he's he's he's, so, he's the encourager for sure. So for <laughs> Katie, Matt, here's what you have uh, debunked three myths in the CrossFit space on this podcast. Myth number one: the sport of CrossFit pulls away from people trying to just learn about fitness. Clearly, that was wrong. You actually found out about CrossFit through the documentaries. Myth number two, uh, one affiliate has an impact on the other. You left two affiliates till you finally found the best fit for you at CrossFit Huntersville. And then myth number three, that getting better inside the box doesn't help you outside of the box. You've hit all three of those. Now, Matt's a real person, correct, Fern? Uh, Well... I don't know if we can actually verify that because this is virtual, but I am. Do you have legs? Do you have legs? (laughs) Just, you know, Jay, some real people do not have legs. I I know. I'm curious. Yeah. Touche, Matt. Touche. I know several, actually. Katie has legs, too. Pretty cool. I I know several. Um, And I can believe. Oh, no. I'll verify, Matt. Is it that is a real person because I have connections to Huntersville? So if yeah, you're not, your cousin's if you're best not, friend's wife goes to Huntersville too. If you're not real, Matt, we will cancel you. No, I, 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 I be canceled. <laughs> Don't make me. I canceled one person, Katie's father. Cancel Lou. I will cancel you as well, Matt. So let's make sure that doesn't happen. Um, dude, this that's that's so awesome. How did you find out about us? So the 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 first box. Um, n- knows what you was guys. the name of that again? What was it called? <laughs> it crossfit down the street for me. <laughs> you you guys are familiar with them. Um, oh, we know yeah. them. Yeah, and, and I I would be back there if if, if it was oh, closer. I ne- I probably wouldn't have went to Huntersville or the other box too. Um, I I think I think this. How, how far is Huntersville? Um, for oh walking this, I I can walk. Oh, okay. To it. My it. wife and I walk by it every night. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Cool. Uh, and and the uh, box one is probably 20 minutes away so i've moved as well um so that's part of it too right it's convenience is important but i would imagine if the first box was what you were looking for you may have stayed there yeah and and i think in this season i I probably would have tried them again uh the owner's just been the owners are just so awesome they're they're great people and he uh I, i actually tried to do some like personal training with him and he had recommended against it just knowing me and he was right. Like I, I didn't do, he did his part and I didn't do my part. Um, so that like is I, an interest. So you've now debunked a fourth one, which is like, like everybody should do PT. And again, we have no beef with PT, but kudos to that box owner for being candid with you and not, and not that. And so there's a difference between like PT can be beneficial because we'll get to work together one-on-one and this not being a good fit for you maybe right now at this time. And so I think that's something very valuable to understand. Like as a professional, my job is to give the appropriate recommendation and the appropriate recommendation might be, Hey, I don't, I don't think you should do PT for these number of reasons. That doesn't mean that it wouldn't be beneficial. It just means that it wouldn't be effective if I am in fact correct about some of these evaluations that I've made, which is all that's, which is all that really matters. Because if I, what what would be the outcome if you had done this PT sessions, Matt, got nothing out of it? Like, what do you think you would, how would you do, how do you think you would feel about all of that? Like, cause you did some of them, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I, uh, we were meeting once a week at the box because it's 20, 25 minutes away. And then right. I'm to do these own workouts during the week at, at the gym at our apartment. And I, yeah, I would do two or three, or I wouldn't push myself or I would use very light dumbbells. I would just cheat the whole time and, and un, not cheat on purpose, but just, I'm not being pushed because I'm not with people. Right. Um, and, and he was right. And he kind of predicted that. And I felt like, man, I've sent, I'm sitting here wasting our money. And my wife and I, we had a pretty hard, uh, we're in a lot better place now, but our first year of marriage was really difficult. And that was, um, playing on that too. And he encouraged me, Hey, like, it, like you need the community right now. And I, uh, said no. And he was right. 
I th- you know, debunking the fourth myth is huge. I think so many people make this play that like you see, you know, somebody new and it's like, I need to get them to do one-on-one. And, th- and the truth of the matter is it's, it's not for everybody. And, you know, even someone that's starting and on their weight loss journey, they need motivation. They need community. They need the fun. Probably more than anything. Yeah. And, 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 you know, it goes back to what we've said about that stuff. It's like, cool. I'm sure your one-on-one thing is fantastic. However, it sucks and no one wants to do it. It's not fun. Like it's, it's it the moral of the story, Matt, is you're hired and <laughs> we, we are going to bring you on the best hour team. Um, we were looking for Katie's replacement and I feel like you're a great fit. Yep. And, um, and, and, and you're going to introduce us to the rock. You said, yeah, <laughs> It's, I, unfor- it's unfortunate for Katie, but I feel like you're a good. It's unfortunate really. for all the. It's tragic, what? really, <laughs> that you guys would kick me off the team just before meeting the Rock. Yes, Katie. <laughs> clearly, no, you're not that's, fired. That's your severance package. You get to meet the Rock. I get to meet the Rock. If, oh, I, okay, we, then that's fine. If we fired you and brought the Rock on, <laughs> you'd be fine. <laughs> how upset would, would you? Would you? Would you try to find us and murder us? I um I don't know time will tell, but I think that it would depend <laughs> on if you just you just brought him on because he's the Rock, or if you have made him you know show that he can do the work. You have to you know. Ooh, I think ooh, that ooh. would. You're be. not just so. You're, what you're saying is the Rock doesn't have an automatic pass to come on this yeah. show. Of course not. Nobody does. Well, clear, right. clearly, clearly, um, Katie's, Katie's a little too serious for this podcast. Everybody, <laughs> Matt, we want to keep. We you know we definitely want to follow up with you about your journey. Um, I would say let, let's get you back on in you know three six months and, and and see where you're at and hopefully that also helps to keep you accountable. You got like like I said about seven or eight listeners of the show, and you know we don't want to let them down. We might even yeah, come yeah, see sure. you, Matt. We might even come see you. That'd be awesome. CrossFit right, Huntersville. So we got to visit friends, cousins, other cousin, former dog walker. The okay. So let's close with this, Matt. Somebody who's trying to start their fitness journey is interested in CrossFit what do you tell them to look for in a CrossFit box? For me, find a box that has smaller classes in one class at a time instead of multiple classes. And then coaches who can communicate well and, and, and their responsibility to, to be open and communicate. Like I, I, in a class last week, I was like, Hey, um, I told Erica, actually, I was like, just, so you know, like I'm feeling some pain in my left knee. I said, I, I don't think I need to do anything. Like it's not too bad, but I just want to make you aware of it. And uh, that's, that's something that I didn't do at the first box, which I regret. So, so I think the, yeah, communicate well. And then the person that's looking for a box also communicate well and, and be open to that communication. Very cool. Box owners, Love it. listen up. Yeah. That's, for those, for those yeah. of you who want to start CrossFit, listen up. Yeah, I was gonna say that's advice for you know, box owners, but also like you said, there there definitely has to be some onus on the member as well. You feeling pain in your knee? We don't know that if you don't talk to us. Exactly. And don't be scared to like scale down. I'll like I th- this week instead of toes to bar, I was gonna do dragonflies, um, l- l- lifting my my legs yeah, up, and I great great option. I um. I I told one of the coaches, I I told her, I was like, Hey, I don't think I can do five rounds of 12 of these. And, um, she encouraged me just to give it a try to start with it. And then we'll need, if we need to scale down, we will. And I did. And I was actually able, able to do, to do all five rounds. Um, which the first week when during our, my, my first week of classes, I couldn't do five or six of those. Um, so just having coaches that push you too has been really nice. That's awesome. And we're excited to see you hit your first RX workout. I'm sure. I mean, there are ones you will obviously do, whether it's a 5k run or a 5k row, right. But certainly, you know, your first RX workout with a certain barbell load or pull-ups, like those are big, huge milestones. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that that's kind of your focus. Cause I, like I said, you know, Fern and I teaching level ones around the world, you know, we talk about it, you know, in, in the nutrition lecture, especially, but it's like you, you focus on performance everything else is going to follow. Yeah. And that, that's Good. what I'm trying to do right now. So Good stuff, Matt. Anything you want to share with the listeners or the world right now? You have a 
documentary you want to talk about <laughs> anything else that we can promote no, I would just say don't, we, uh... don't don't listen to people until you try it so so, so try it first uh, it's not a cult love it so. well that's not entirely true let's not it is. It's let's not lie to the listeners it's a little it's a little cultish and that's okay i think it's important to have a little cult i want you, know? you to drink this juice matt uh, yeah drink this kool-aid for us would you um but matt it's been a pleasure getting to know you it's it's awesome to hear about your journey shout out to ryan shout out to crossfit huntersville shout out to your wife um you got a great support to yeah to erica you got a great support system there and i and no doubt because of that you're gonna achieve everything you're trying to so Good stuff. And I look forward to uh, your next documentary or commercial and everything else you have to share with us. And if you need me, I'll I'll send you to my um, agent. Yeah. Just, just send me their info. Thank you guys for having me on. I really appreciate it. You're the man. That was great. Thank you you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for checking out this episode of the best hour of their day podcast. We appreciate you listening and choosing to have us help you and your passion for coaching and affiliate ownership. You can find more episodes just like this on all podcast platforms. If you're interested in learning more, you can reach out to us on any social media platforms, or you can visit www.besthouroftheirday.com to book a call. If you found this episode helpful for you, please share it so that we can help other coaches and affiliate owners to help build a bigger and stronger CrossFit community. Thanks for listening.